Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano and welcome to City of Churches. Today, today we're in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn to visit Sacred Heart St. Stephen's Church. You know, it's amazing. I mean, Carroll Gardens is so beautiful. These are like some of the prettiest brownstones I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they're so well kept and so amazingly beautiful. You see the trees are starting to bloom. Well, here we are, which is very, very unique. We're in a Dunkin' Donuts coffee shop yard. It's, it's, it's the courtyard to the Dunkin' Donuts, and I've never seen this in my life. There's a statue of St. Joseph. I don't think you can look anywhere that I've ever seen that there's ever been a, a, a statue, a religious statue in a Dunkin' Donuts coffee shop, which is amazing. This is just a testament to this neighborhood, which is so beautiful. And if you look around, this neighborhood, I mean, it's, it is such a beautiful day. And with the trees blooming and stuff, it's just, it's really amazing. I, I think I want to move here. That's how nice it is. And another historical fact here, and I kind of can relate to this, is over the fence is that flagpole with the American flag is from the ILA that was, was dedicated to the longshoremen. My grandpa and my uh, a few of my uncles who passed on, they were longshoremen in this area. And I remember the ILA, I remember that as a kid, taking my grandmother there for her uh, pension benefits after my grandfather passed. So that's pretty cool. See, there's always something going on with City of Churches that I can relate to. Today, in Carroll Gardens is a thriving community with different nationalities living here. But it still reflects a strong influence of the Italian Catholic heritage of those immigrants who moved here about 100 years ago. Now this is the Mola de Bari Social Club, and they're still active in this community, organizing the annual procession of the Andolorata, the patron saint of Barra, Italy. Now people come here from all over the tri-state area to take part in the processions around the neighborhood, ending at the church right here, Sacred Heart St. Stephen's. That's right, a church with two names. There's a great history about that. There's some really great stuff inside, so come on, we're gonna go inside, you're gonna check it out. It's a Really great stuff. Welcome back. I'm here with Monsignor Guy Massey, uh, pastor of Sacred Hearts St. Stephen's Church right here in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn. And many of our viewers will probably recognize Monsignor from all his numerous appearances on Net TV. And I'm also here with John Heyer, parish pastoral associate. Okay, guys, I want to thank you very much for inviting us to the show. And uh, I understand you're celebrating your 150th anniversary here? We are. You are? Well, why don't you two guys tell our viewers a little bit about it? John would know more about this because he's been here for almost 150 years. Yes. So he, he should looks be able to tell for us his age. about our wonderful I'm parish. I'm also a field director, so I'm able to keep myself preserved well, you know. Shot of embalming fluid. Every day works. <laughs> so, so go ahead. So uh, the, the, the church building that we're in here is uh, St. Stephen Church, originally as it was founded. And that parish was founded back in 1866. So that is 150 years ago. Um, it was founded by the Irish immigrants who had lived in this community at that time. Um, and over time, though, the community began to change. And around the 1880s, the Italian immigrants started influxing here to lower South Brooklyn, was what it was called at the time, because it was south of the city of Brooklyn. Yes. And we're talking before New York City even formed, this parish was established. 
And so uh, once the Italians uh, arrived here, they weren't quite welcomed in the Irish Church of St. Stephen because the, the Italians spoke a different language, they looked a little different, so they formed their own parish within the boundaries of this parish, believe it or not, called Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. And so that was found in 1882 as the very first parish in the Diocese of Brooklyn for the Italian immigrants. So it's the, the mother church of the Italian immigrants here in the diocese. Um, unfortunately, in 1941, the BQE was built and the Church of Sacred Hearts was raised. The BQE actually goes through the, what would have been the front doors or what was the front doors of Sacred Hearts Church. Oh, wow. um, and so when that building was demolished, that, that congregation, that parish was moved into this building here of St. Stephen. And so that's why we have this interesting name of Sacred Hearts and St. Stephen, where two parishes um, come together as one parish for the last 60 years now. But we, uh, we have two great histories, one being found 150 years ago, the other being found in 1882 as the first Italian parish. And we've been here ministering to the people of, of God since then. And so in some ways, the, the story of the parish is contemporaneous with the uh, immigration story here in, the, in, in Brooklyn. So if you look at the, the parish and the church itself, in some ways, the story of the immigration is written in uh, the statuary you have and even in the windows you have. If you just look to your right, you will see the stained glass window of St. Patrick, uh, reminding us of who built the stones and the bricks and the mortar of this building. And if you look to the right and to the left of St. Patrick, you will see St. Francis of Assisi and St. Catherine of Siena, who were the uh, patron and patronesses of uh, Italy. Oh, wow. So you have uh, a story that's going on here, and the story continues now with um, other immigrants or people who are being transplanted into the city now. They may not be of ethnic background, but we now have people coming from the Midwest, from upstate, from California, who are settling here, who are working here. There are now French people in the neighborhood. And so it seems to be, to me, that this is a parish for all peoples at all times of their lives. Two churches formed together and now it transcends all these years. There are so many statues here to saints and Stain, now I'm a big fan of stained glass. I talk about that in every episode because I, I, I love stained glass. And yeah. this is, some of this is absolutely breathtaking. But why are there so many saints here? There's a story for each of this. But you know, it, I'm going to ask you, what do you see when you see those statues in that stained glass? Because what you see may be very different from what the people who were the immigrants saw in those statues. So for example, if you look to your right, you will see a statue of Mary of Sorrows, here known as Adolorata. Adolorata means a lady of sorrows in Italian. Well, when I first came, I saw a lady of sorrows. The people from Mola di Bari see that very differently. They see Mary of Sorrows, that's true, but they also see where they came from. They okay. see their story. They see the piazza, they see, their, they see their history, they see what they left to come here. This tells us a great deal about immigration. It tells us the need to welcome the stranger. Sure. It tells us what the new person might be feeling as they come through, as they come to America. Yes, they want to be here, but yes, part of them is in their, their former country. Sure. How difficult it is for them to, to master the language at times. And in a country that is made up of immigrants, everyone sitting here has immigrant roots, we have to keep in mind that while we are maybe the second, third, or fourth generation of immigrants, our the ancestors were those similar to the new people who are arriving now. And so these are constant reminders to welcome the stranger, the one who's knocking on the door, for whatever reason. And. Uh, and their, the, the sense to, to recognize their longing for the homeland and also their longing for a new life. Keeping that in mind, think about the fact that when they were doing this, we began in 1882 as a parish, right? The first image that was brought over was the statue of Madonna de Laura from Meta, okay, which is in Salerno, the Salerno province. 
And that statue was brought over because those people couldn't, like today, fly back home for the feast day. Right. Yeah. They couldn't go back and forth and see their parents or their, their, their siblings. They didn't have the Skype. They, they, didn't have, they didn't have Skype. So instead, these images did that for them. They were able to celebrate the hometown here. So Monsignor Massey says that you're the expert. So uh, I'm gonna, the expert about the neighborhood. And the, I'm going to ask you some questions. You chime in at any point. <laughs> who designed this building and who was the architect? Sure. So even though the St. Stephen Parish was formed in 1866, this building um, was actually built in 1874. The first structure that the parish was housed in was actually the former St. Paul Episcopal Church, which the Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn had purchased from them. But it, it was very small, it was a wood frame building, and pretty soon the congregation outgrew it. So Patrick Keeley was um, the architect who was then commissioned to design this church building. Patrick Keeley, by the way, who was an Irish immigrant himself, is one of probably the most um, renowned ar church architects that you could see throughout the, um, the United States. He designed churches such as the Cathedral in Boston, the Basilica of the Sacred Heart at Notre Dame, and many of the other churches throughout the country. And he's actually buried in our very own Holy Cross Cemetery here in Brooklyn. Um, Patrick Healy, though, designed this in the neo-Gothic style, which was very common back in the, uh, the 1860s, 1870s, talking just the time right after the Civil War, basically. Um, and some of the things that stand out as Keeley points or, or, or points of his architecture are, for instance, the moldings around the windows. At the bottom, you'll see that on the left and the right, they're not symmetrical. Instead, what you see is a bulb on one side and a bud on the other. And that's actually all imagery that was used in order to talk about the resurrection, talk about the bulb then blossoming into a flower. Okay. If you also take a look at the tops of the capitals on the pillars, hidden right at the top of the center column there is a clover, a three-leaf clover. Again, hearkening back to his own Irish immigrant roots. Back in the, in the time when this was built, remember we have poor immigrants funding the construction of these buildings. And so they, they had the artisan skills, but they didn't have the materials. So for instance, all the columns that you see are in the church, whether they're the little columns or the large columns holding it up, they look marble. But they're in fact not marble, they're plaster. And so a faux art was used in order to marbleize. Same thing with the gold-leafed columns at the top, the capitals. Those aren't solid metal structures. They're plaster painted as gold. And that was something that was very common. The other thing that was common back when the building was built was stained glass was, you know, very expensive. And you said you have a, a love of stained glass. Well, when the building was first built, all of the stained glass here was just geometric shape. And so there weren't images on any of them. Slowly, as people donated the money for, for windows, the windows were installed in a more elaborate way. So for that reason, we actually have one window, which was installed very early on, before the others, that doesn't match anything else and that's Jesus with the children. And it's much more elaborate. By the time the congregation had enough money to then purchase all of the rest of the windows, the pastor was different and they changed the style of the type of window that was installed. And so that also tells you how a church building isn't something that's completed all at once, but sometimes goes through an evolution along with the parish. Right, and even if you, 150 years, you know, uh, we were writing the history of this place, and I am very interested in that, that period. You know, it's 1866. President Lincoln was shot in April of the, the April prior to, to, to the founding of this parish. So the United States was going through the Reconstruction period. President Johnson, President Grant were the, were the, were the presidents of the time. You had the relocation and the uh, integration of the newly freed slaves in the South and even in the North, which was going on at Plymouth Church in this name not too far from here. It was the Victorian period. There were many writers. It was the time in which John Henry Newman, now a blessed of the Catholic Church, was writing. So in, in this 1800, the 19th century, this church was here. And uh, I'm sure the neighborhood was very different, but different, this church yeah. was here. And it has been that for so many people and for, for so many years. And so I think it's a great privilege to, to serve here. Have there been any original um, artifacts from the original church here today? From, from the original 1866, yes. first St. Stephen? So believe it or not, in the building here that we're, that we're in, 
there really is nothing left because this building was burnt in 1951. So I was going to ask you about there was a fire here. Yeah, right? in 1951, and it wasn't just a little fire, it was an extensive fire. The only thing that remained after the fire were the four exterior walls as well as the steeple. So the steeple is original and the facade is original. Everything inside was put back exactly to the detail of Keeley, to his original plans. Um, the only things that we have from that original church, believe it or not, are the two statues in the front of the building and the two statues in the rear of the building. Those were commissioned in 1866 to be placed outside of what was then the St. Paul's Episcopal Church to make it look a bit more Catholic. It was kind of a reclaiming of the space, showing that there was a difference. So, and so those are original, but that's about it. Nothing else from inside so the building. So then basically all these um, saints are replicas again? So now these saints, remember, were from Sacred Hearts Church, which okay. was the Italian okay. parish. That was formed in 1882. The original chapel stood in the parish here up until the 1980s when it, when it later collapsed. Now it's Mother Cabrini Park. Okay. But that's where most of the statues were housed. During the time of the merger of the two parishes in 1941, which by the way happened the same day as Pearl Harbor oh, wow. in December, it was the same exact day, there was a grand procession of the statues from Sacred Hearts Church here to St. Stephen. It was kind of the merger of the two parishes. And so many of the statues you see here that are original back to the 1800s were the ones that were safe in the chapel. They weren't part of that procession here because what wound up happening later on is because of the fire, many of those other images were destroyed. And so they had to be replaced. Some of them were salvaged, but most were destroyed and had to be replaced. Mm -hmm. wow. And just to look at, if you look at one of the windows here, at the very top, you see a medallion uh, talking about the two ethnic groups. There is an Irish harp surrounded by shamrocks. Oh yeah. So as a result, uh, these medallions tell you stories of who was here. Uh, and it's all part of the ongoing See, I, evolution of this parish. And I was going to say, are there any interesting artifacts that you'd like to talk about? I, there, there are so many. Yes. From what you're, when we're, we're in conversation, there are literally so many. That, that's interesting in itself, but that tells a story. Yes. And it, and it was really after that fire in 1951 that the Italian parish, which now really took over St. Stephen's Church, for lack of another word, was able to put their stamp on it. So mm -hmm. they added the real marble around the outside. Sure. The, oh. the altar that we see behind us was added in during the merger of those two parishes. And something that's quite funny is that originally the stained glass window, windows here had the four evangelists in each of the corners, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. However, what we have now is actually um, Matthew, John, Luke, and St. Anthony. Because somehow in the scheme of things, after the fire, the Italian parish, the pastor, decided that Anthony was much more important than Mark. <laughs> and so he was replaced. Okay. <laughs> There's something special about the altar, am I right? There are a couple of things that are special about the altar. One is that the altar was installed as a, un a symbol of the uniting of the two parishes. So the original marble altar that was there in, when this was the Church of St. Stephen was taken out and the new altar was put in with the symbol of St. Stephen and of the Sacred Heart of Mary and right. Jesus. The other unique thing that we still maintain here in the parish, because we, we do believe in great symbols and symbolism and especially bringing our liturgy to life, is each year for our Easter vigil, that entire altar, the entire reyadas you see behind us, is covered in one large purple drape. And that purple drape is kept up while the church is in darkness from Good Friday until the Easter Vigil. And at the point of the Gloria, the drape is dropped down and a spotlight goes on to what's then the resurrected Christ statue high up on the altar where you see the crucifix currently. And all of the lights illuminate the church showing that Christ has risen, really walking the people of the parish through that death on Good Friday with the procession into the resurrection. Wow, wow. that was worth worth mentioning to our viewers that's amazing oh wow. yeah how many how many people can sit in here how many people can you see we've had uh, one of our largest events every year is our good friday procession and it um, acts as two things one is it's a traditional good friday procession with the images of our lady of sorrows dressed in black the Cristo Morto, or the Dead Christ in a glass casket, a funeral band, ladies oh, wow. dressed with candles. It, it's very solemn. Um, quite honestly, it's a bit Fellini as well. 
um, and over the top in a our bit? imagery. In our imagery, um, but that's usually our largest event of the year, where people come back home who have left here. People from the tri-state area, even as far as Delaware, come every year for that procession. And for that procession, we usually house packed in here about 700 people. Um, you know, comfortable, it's five, but you could fit 700 if you really try hard. Now, the, the pipe organ, was it, I, I guess during the fire, it was destroyed, so it had to be rebuilt. Correct. It's a new pipe organ from after 1951. And the, the, the pastor at the time during the fire and, and who led the reconstruction was Monsignor Francis Del Vecchio. The front of the church um, here, the front block, Summit Street, is renamed for him, Monsignor Del Vecchio Place. And he was actually a piano player. Oh, wow. And an organist, which many people didn't know. And so he paid specific attention to the installation of the new organ, which is actually the same organ in components and in manufacturing as the organ at St. Patrick's Cathedral. However, it's uh, less ranks. There are less pipes in there, so it is a smaller version. But one of the funny things that Monsignor Del Vecchio had installed, which isn't there any longer, was a, a pipe and drape, which sat on the edge of the choir loft. And he did that so that every once in a while he could play the organ for mass without anyone realizing it was him. And I think Monsignor Del Vecchio has certainly left a very big imprint on this parish. You know, he was the reconstruction, uh, the reconstruction period of this parish was under Del Vecchio. Sure, absolutely. The fire and I post. think he uh, gave it a certain definition uh, as to what it has had for many, many decades now. As well as a rallying cry for everyone to come together. That's right. One of the things to keep in mind, I think in Italian parishes and I think in Italian spirituality, many of these people believe and act as though this is true, and I think it is. God is part of their family. Mary is part of their family. So as a result, the parish church itself takes on a family atmosphere. So gathering for Mass on a Sunday here, when they gather, they talk. That's what they should be doing. They're greeting each other. Of everyone course, Mass knows starts everyone. late because Monsignor's talking too much because to everyone. Because I'm talking to people too. This is where we meet. We are family. Yeah. And what is the strength of the, of the ethnicity? Is the family. So the parish then becomes the extension of the family. The parish church becomes the extension of their house. And so what goes on here affects what goes on there. So yes, are we very familiar? Yes, do we have our dysfunctionality? Yes, are we all in this together? Do I know the names of the parishioners here? Do I know where people sit? Of course. And so my model, even for running this parish, is the family. So we're not as formal as maybe some places are, but I will tell you, once that bell rings for mass, the sanctuary bell, I mean, rings for mass, Everyone is zeroed in. Once go in peace, the mass is ended, well, then we can start the conversation again. And I think it's, uh, it's an invitation. We, we should extend an invitation to anyone who wishes to come here. The doors are open. We welcome whoever you are, whether you're Catholic or not, whether you're searching or not, whether you're a believer or not, to come through the door. When we come back, Monsignor Massey and John are going to show us something very unique and special here at Sacred Heart St. Stephen's. So we'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back. I'm here with Monsignor Massey and John Heyer. And we're here to talk about this special artifact here at Sacred Heart St. Stephen's. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, here we are at the altar of Sacred Heart St. Stephen's Church. And on the altar, there is a chalice that was given to the parish of Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary on the anniversary of their 25th anniversary. 25th anniversary of the founding of the parish. February 12th, 1907. This parish received this chalice from now St. Pius X, who was the present Pope at that particular time. The chalice is made of silver and gold. And if you look at the base of the chalice, you will see little statues of Moses, Aaron, the high pri the priest, our, uh, Moses' brother, and of course Melchizedek, uh, who is spoken about in the book of Genesis, and we always see that as a prefigurement of Christ. He was the first to offer bread and wine to God. Around the base, there is the story of the um, Stations of the Cross, so the speaking to us about the Passion of Christ. If we come up a little further, we see angels holding up the actual cup, and the cup is also adorned with medallions of the, um, the story of the Passion. 
and then uh, the actual cup. And you can even see the stamp from, from Rome on the bottom. Oh, wow. We occasionally take this out and we use it for big parish celebrations when the attention is of the parish. So for instance, Easter, Christmas, and on occasions such as those. The opening up of our 150th, we use yeah, that. Oh, wow, yes. Well, I'm gonna hand this back to you, sir. That is truly a remarkable and amazing artifact. Thank you guys so much for sharing that with us. And um, well, I wanna thank you so much, Monsignor Massey. Well, thank you for coming. And John Heyer. Thank you very much. For uh, a, a history lesson uh, on Sacred Heart St. Stephen right here in Carroll Gardens. And um, that's it for this episode. So if you have any questions you would like to ask about this particular episode, this church, or you'd like to recommend the church, uh, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter, but there's a website here too, right? The website here is actually www.sacredhearts-saintstephen.com. We're gonna put it up on the screen too, so just to make it easier for people. But if you have any questions about Sacred Hearts St. Stephen's, you can go visit their website. Or if you want to recommend a church to us, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter or, you, or on our website at www.netnewyork.tv or you can write into us at City of Churches at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. Until next time, I'm Anthony Mangano with Monsignor Guy Massey, MGM, and John Heyer. Thank you so much for watching us. God bless you and we'll see you soon. Oh, thank thank you. you. Thanks. That's this is really good. Great.